Hi all, welcome to the lecture video of CS404 Embedded Systems. In this video, we will be dealing with one of the topics from Module 2. Module 2 has got different topics, fundamental issues in hardware software code design, computation models in embedded design, introduction to unified modeling language, hardware software trade-offs. And I, in this video, I will be dealing with introduction to unified modeling language, that is UML. We will cover these points through this video, introduction to UML to UML, building blocks of UML, relationships in UML and UML diagrams. Unified modeling language, it is a visual modeling language for object oriented design. UML helps in all phases of system design through a set of unique diagrams for requirements capturing, designing and deployment. We use UML diagrams to portray the behavior and structure of a system. So, as we have read, Unified Modeling Language, it is a visual modeling language and is mainly used in object-oriented design programming. So, it helps in all phases of a system design, which means whenever we are designing a system, it will help us in all stages for, uh, for its identification of the requirements, how we have to implement them. All these uh, requirements uh, it will help us to identify all these requirements by developing a set of unique diagrams and this set of unique diagrams or such type of a visual modeling that is is known as uh, UML. We use UML diagrams to portray the behavior that means by using the UML diagrams we will be able to identify the behavior and structure of a system. UML has got mainly three building blocks. The first one is things, second one is relationships, and the third one is diagrams. So the first one things. Things it is an abstraction of the UML model, which means a UML model has got different elements. All these together or the abstraction of all these elements are known as things. The second one is relationship, an entity which expresses the type of relationship between UML elements, which means uh, we have got different UML elements like objects, classes, interfaces, etc. So we have to mention a relationship or a connection between them. So that is so that is known as relationships. The third one is diagrams. UML diagrams give a pictorial representation of the static aspects, behavior aspects, and organization and management of different modules of a system. Which means, uh, in our UML model, we have got different uh, aspects like its static aspect, behavioral aspect, and different modules are present in it. So, how we are going to manage or organize these modules? So, uh, the pictorial representation of the whole of the whole of the whole organization and management of these modules are represented in UML diagram. So, uh, things is one of the building blocks in UML. So, the things can be again classified into four types. The first one is structural things. Structural things, they represent mostly the static parts of UML model. They are also known as classifiers, class, interface, use case, use case realization, active class, component and node are the structural things in UML, which means in, uh, in structural things we represent the static part of UML model, which means the non-moving parts of a UML model are represented using structural things. They are also known as classifiers. Some of the examples are class, interface, use case, etc. The next element is behavioral things. It represents mostly dynamic parts of a UML model. Interaction, state, machine and activity are the behavioral things in UML. Which means in, uh, by using the behavioral things we are going to represent the dynamic part of UML model. Which means the, non, the, non, the moving parts of a UML model are represented here. Examples are interaction, state, machine and activity. The next element is grouping things. These are the organization parts of UML model package and subsystem are the grouping things in UML. Which means in our UML, UML model there may be some uh, there may be some uh, like there may be some elements which should be existing as groups. So all these elements are called as grouping things. Next one is annotation things. These are the explanatory parts of a UML model. 
Note is the annotation thing in human, which means in human model there may be some element which has to be explained. So we are uh, so that is uh, that is known as annotation thing. So in human model, the explanatory portions or that part is known as annotation thing. For example, note it is an annotation thing. In note we will represent the uh, explanation either using informal or formal uh, text. Otherwise, we will use an embedded image. So under the structural things, there comes different elements. The first one is class. Uh, among uh, in which there comes a description and also the representation of the element. So first one is the class. A class is a template describing a set of objects which share the same attributes, relationships, operations and semantics. It can be considered as a blueprint of object, which means in our class there may be a different there may be different types of objects or a set of objects. The, uh, so object it is one of the element in a human model. So all these objects, they may share the same attributes. They have different relationships and they have different operations. So all these objects together is known as a class. So uh, uh, a class it is considered as a blueprint of object. It is represented as the, in, a, in a table. We will be first uh, representing the identifier, the variables and its methods. The next element is active class. Class presenting a thread of control in a system. It can initiate control activity. Active class is represented in the same way as that of a class but with thick border lines. Which means in active class, this class is made, this class is going to initiate the whole control of the UML. It is represented as that of the class itself but it has got thick border lines. The next element is interface, a collection of externally visible operations which specify a service of a class. It is represented as a circle attached to the class, which means a class has got different services. We have to specify these services. So these services are being uh, specified using an element called interface and uh, it is represented as a circle which is then attached to the class. The next element is use case. It defines a set of sequence of actions that is normally represented with an ellipse indicating the name. Which means in a human model, we have got different actions. We have to uh, identify how these actions are being, uh, how actions has to get executed. So all these sequence of actions or the set of actions are known as the use case. It is normally represented with an ellipse indicating the name. The next element is collaboration. The interaction diagram specifying the collaboration of different use cases. It is normally represented with a dotted ellipse indicating the name, which means in our use case, in our uh, UML, we have got different use cases. So all these use cases has to get has to be collaborated into one. So this is known as a collaboration diagram, uh, which is represented. We have a dotted ellipse, and inside it we will be indicating the the next element is component, the physical packaging of classes and interface. We have got in our UML model. So in our UML model, we have got different classes, interface, etc. So how all these classes are physically being pack, uh, are being pack, packed? This is known as component. The next element is node. A node is a computational resource existing at runtime, represented using a cube with name. Which means during the runtime, there will be an element or a source which gets computed. So that uh, particular uh, resource is or source is known as the node, is represented using a cube with name. So the next one is the behavioral things. Under the behavioral things, we have we have got two elements. The first one is interaction. Behavior comprising a set of objects exchanging messages to accomplish a specific purpose, represented by arrow with name of operation. Which means we have got uh, we have got consider an example. We have got two objects, and these two objects has to uh, they has to perform an operation, and this operation is performed by by the method of exchanging messages. So uh, such an interaction is known as the element interaction. It is represented by arrow and, and on the top of the arrow, it will be mentioning the name of the operation. 
The next element is a state machine, the behavior specifying a sequence of states in response to events through which an object traverses during its lifetime. Which means whenever an element or an object it undergoes it or it moves from one state to another state, so there will be some changes in the uh, in the properties of that element. So uh, when moving from one state to another state, there will be some response to those events. This is known as a state machine. The next uh, one is the grouping things. Under the grouping things, we have got an element called package. It organizes the elements into packages. It is only a conceptual thing represented as a tab folder with name. Which means in a human model, we have got different elements like classes, objects, etc. So all these elements are organized into a package. It is represented as a tab folder with name. The next one is the annotation things. Under the annotation things, we have got the element as node. It is an it is an explanatory element in a UML model. Contains formal or informal explanatory text. It, it may also contain embedded image. As I have said, it is a, it is one of the annotation thing. Uh, the, uh, all the explanatory parts of a UML it is, uh, it is known as a node. So it can, it may contain formal or informal explanatory text. Otherwise, the explanation may be in the form of an embedded image. So, uh, right now we have completed one of the building block in UML. The next one is relationships in UML. It expresses the type of relationship between UML objects. In UML modeling, a relationship is a connection between two or more UML model elements that adds semantic information to a model. One can use several UML relationships to define the structure between model elements. So, uh, we have got in our UML model, we have got different elements like objects, classes, etc. So, we have to express some kind of relationship between them. So, hence we are using the relationship as a building block in UML. So, by using a UML model, actually it is a connection between two or more UML model elements. So, that connection is known as a relationship. So, in between one no in between uh, in between one no in between a mod, uh, UML model element we can use more than one UML relationship. So we have got different UML relationships following are them. The first one is association. It is a structural relationship describing the link between objects. The association can be one to one or one to many. Aggregation and composition are the two variants of association, which means between two objects there is a link between those two objects. So such a structural relationship is known as association. It can be one to one or one to many. That means from one element to one element or from one element to multiple elements. Aggregation and composition are the two types of association. Next one is aggregation. It represents is a part of relationship represented by a line with a hollow diamond at the end. Which means for example consider two elements A and B and A and two elements A and B. So A is a part of B. So such a relationship is known as aggregation. So uh, at, the, at the one side we so in uh, in this figure, uh, if he, if here we are writing A and at the next end we are writing B, which means A is a part of B. The next element is composition. It is an aggregation with strong ownership relation to rep relation to represent the component of a complex object represented by a line with a solid diamond at the end, which means we have to represent the component of a complex object but it has got a strong ownership relation and it is also an easy part of relationship that means it is a type of aggregation that is it, is a, it has got a part of relationship at the same time a strong ownership relationship in order to represent the uh, component of a complex object the next element Relationship as generalization. It represents a parent-child relationship. The parent may be more generalized and child being specialized version of the parent object. So here we are going to represent a parent-child relationship. The parent will be more generalized one and the child will be a specialized version of the parent. The next relationship is dependency. It represents a relationship in which one element uses or depends on another element represented by a dot arrow with head pointing to the dependent element. Which means uh, in the UML model we have got different elements. If one element uses or depends on the other element then that relationship is known as dependency. The next relationship is known as real realization. Relationship between two elements in which one element realizes the behavior specified by the other element which means the element 2 
it will realize the behavior uh, specified by the element 1. So here we have got an example. The first example it shows the relationship generalization, which means we have got two classes. The first one is an alarm uh, and uh, the I are identified as alarm and it has got methods like start and stop and it has got a generalization relationship towards OD visual indicators. That means that visual indication has to uh, has got a method like start, stop and have to set the type of indication. The next uh, one shows, the next figure shows the uh, example as a uh, for the relationship aggregation. Aggregation it is an uh, a, a part of relationship which means here alarm it is a part of the warning system. So hence we are using the relationship aggregation because alarm it is a part of warning system. Here we have got a simple example about the seatbelt warning system. So this is how we represent the alarm class. Alarm, it has got methods like start and stop. This is how we represent the state when the alarm is in on. So this is how an alarm timer class interaction for the seatbelt warning system. Because the alarm and timer has to interact, they has to get interacted because uh, both this element has to uh, they has to uh, communicate or they has to they has to uh, they has to perform some operation by the method of exchange messages. So this is known as interaction. So alarm alarm has got my methods like start and stop and timer. They have got some variable called period and have to set the time for the timer and always start and stop. So the next building block of uh, UML is UML diagrams. So UML diagrams again picture representation of static aspects, behavioral aspects and organization and management of different modules of the system. Which means uh, uh, our UML model has got different modules like classes, packages, interfaces etc. So how we are going to organize and manage all these modules. So all of the picture representation is given in UML diagram. The first, so it can be classified the first one into static diagram, a diagram representing the static or the structural aspect of the system, which means uh, in this diagram, uh, the, the, uh, we will display the or we will represent the static, I mean, this uh, based upon the structure of the system, we are going to display the, uh, we are going to dis display the requirements or the main portion of a uh, system. So, class diagram, object diagram, component diagram, package diagram, composite structure diagram, and deployment diagram falls under this category. So, uh, under this, the first one is object diagram. Gives, it gives a pictorial representation of a set of objects and their relationships. It represents a structural organization between objects. As its name suggests, uh, in this object diagram, we are going to it gives us a pictorial representation about a set of objects and their relationships, mainly that represents the structural organization between the objects. The next one is class diagram. It gives a pictorial representation of different classes in a UML model, the interfaces, the collaboration, interactions, and relationship between the classes, etc. It captures the static design of the system. In class diagram, we are going to represent the, uh, we, are, we, are, we will be pictorially representing the different classes used in a UML model. The interactions, the collaborations, relationships between all these classes are being represented here. The next uh, one is the component diagram. It is a pictorial representation of the implementation view of a system. It comprises of components, relationships and associations among the components. Which means uh, in, in this we are mainly going to represent the, from the implementation view we are going to represent here. Which means in a UML model that we have got different components. So uh, the, com uh, uh, the components present, present in a system, relationship between those components, associations among the components, all these are being displayed in a component diagram. The next one is package diagram. It is a representation of the organization of packages and their elements. Package diagrams are mostly used for organizing use case diagrams and class diagrams, which means in our human model, we have got uh, the, uh, we have got some packages. So how we are going to organize the packages and the elements inside them? So this is how a package. Uh, this is how we are going to represent a package diagram. It is mainly used for uh, use case diagrams and class diagrams. 
Next one is the deployment diagram. This is a pictorial representation of the configuration of runtime processing nodes and the components associated with them, which means during the runtime, there may be some element or some nodes that get processed. So, how the, uh, so the node that get executed at the runtime, so how these components or how that nodes are getting processed at the runtime, so all these are represented in a deployment diagram. Next one is the behavioral diagram as as uh, as of its like name it represents the behavioral aspect of the system. Use case diagram, sequence diagram, state diagram, communication diagram, activity diagram, timing diagram, and interaction diagram are the diagrams in UML. So this is a simple example for use case diagram. The warning system in use case diagram the users are known as actors so here, here we have got two users that is seatbelt and ignition key and this is our case so uh, when the ignition key is off we have to disable the alarm when the ignition key is on the seatbelt is on we have to disable the alarm when the ignition key is on and the seatbelt is off we have to enable the alarm This is a simple sequence diagram for seatbelt warning system. Actually, sequence diagram means uh, we have got different use cases in a UML model. So, how the uh, how all these set of uh, use cases or all, all those set of actions will work in a sequential map. This is not a sequential diagram. So, here we have got two actors that is ignition key and seatbelt, and other components are the wait timer, alarm, and alarm timer. So, the first condition is that when the the first trigger I means the first action the ignition key is on so the timer will wait for a few seconds uh, so when the uh, after when the timer took the timeout it finds that the ignition key is off when the ignition key is off there is no need of any alarm if the ignition key so it finds that that is one of the condition then the condition is that uh, the ignition key is on timer wait for a few seconds after the timeout they found that the uh, seatbelt is off so they have to enable the alarm uh, the seal seat belt is off so they have to enable the alarm they have to enable the so in the here we are going to represent the first one is the ignition key the ignition uh, in the, first, the first action the ignition key that is we are giving a trigger it waits for a few seconds it finds that the timer gets timeout so they uh, so the alarm has to be so so uh, they will uh, so that is the end of the first condition the next condition uh, the ignition key is a uh, trigger. It is on. The, the, uh, wait for a few seconds. After the timeout, they found that the seatbelt is off. So it has to get alarm. The alarm has to be enabled. The alarm rings for a few seconds. It means the timer works for a few seconds. Again, if they found that the seatbelt is on, the alarm has to be disabled. If the alarm, if the seatbelt is again off, they has to uh, again uh, trigger the alarm. So here we are mainly representing how the uh, sequential actions or sequential execution of those actions happen. So use case diagram. Use case diagrams are used for capturing the system functionality as seen by users. It is very useful in system requirements capturing. Use case diagram comprises of use cases, actors and relationship between them. In use case diagram, an actor is one who interacts with the system and use case is a sequence of interaction between the actor and the system. So actually use cases, use case diagrams are mainly used as a primary diagram uh, because uh, uh, when, uh, when a system is developed, there will be user who will be interacting with the system. So uh, uh, what is the primary or the what is the uh, functionality which is seen by the user in that system this is known as so all those components are represented using use case diagram so by using use case diagram you will be able to identify the requirements of a system in use case we have got a use cases actors and relationship between them so in a use case an actor which is also called as a user in case it is something who will, who will interact with the system and use case is a sequence of interactions between the act and the system the next one is a sequence diagram. It is a type of interaction diagram representing the object interaction with respect to time. It emphasizes on the time modeling of messages best suited for the interaction modeling of real time system, which means uh, in our UML, we have got different objects. So, uh, how do all these objects will interact with respect to time? Which means after the first few seconds, then which, which action has to be executed. So, all those uh, object interactions uh, by considering, by considering the time. 
time is in, uh, is represented using sequence diagram mainly focus on the time ordering of messages the next one is the collaboration or communication diagram it is a type of interaction diagram representing the object interaction and how they are linked together it gives emphasizes to the structural organization of objects that send and receive messages in short it represents the collaboration of objects using messages which means uh, in our human model we have got different Uh, objects or different elements so how do all these objects are being interacted how they link together all these are represented in communication or collaboration diagram then here it represents the collaboration of objects using messages the next one is stage chart diagram uh, this uh, diagram show the states transitions events and activities similar to a state machine representation best suited for model reacting system which means uh, when an object it moves from one state to another state what are the transitions or the what are the events undergoing on that particular object so this is known as a state chart diagram The next one is activity diagram. It is a special type of state chart diagram showing activity to activity transition in place of a state transition. It emphasizes on the flow control event objects. So activity diagram it is somewhat similar to state chart diagram, but instead of state transition, this activity diagram will uh, represent the activity to activity transition. That means when an activity when an element moves from one activity to another activity, what are the changes occurring in it? So all those are represented. Presented using the activity diagram, it mainly focus on the control flow M object. So here is what we have learned. We have learned what is UML. It is a visual modeling language which will help us to identify the requirements uh, and during the all phases of a system design. The uh, building blocks of UML are things, relationships, and diagrams. Things they represent the abstraction of UML model. Relationships they show the connection between the UML elements. Diagrams show the pictorial representation of different modules in a system.